Hello. It's the weekend and it's not convenient to get into the library. So welcome to the Berkheiser conference room. In this video, we're going to state some theorems involving dimension and subspaces. Our first theorem is that if H and V are vector spaces and H is a subspace of V, then the dimension of H is less than or equal to the dimension of V. I'm not going to give a formal proof of this theorem, but I'd like you to understand it intuitively. Dimension is a measure of how big a vector space is. This theorem is therefore saying that if you have a large vector space and a small vector space, the large vector space cannot fit into the smaller vector space. I'm going to come back to this theorem and state an addendum later in this video. So let's leave ourselves some blank space to work. And let's come down here and state our next theorem. Suppose H is a subspace of V and V is finite dimensional. Then H is finite dimensional. And what's more, a basis of H can be turned into a basis of V by adding vectors to it. Let's again argue why this is true. It falls short of being a formal proof, maybe. But the fact that H has a finite basis is basically this theorem. If a space is finite, dimensional, it is smaller than an infinite dimensional space. So you can't fit an infinite dimensional space into a finite dimensional space. Now, an argument for this theorem. We have a vector space V and we have H inside of it. And H has a basis. Call it B1, B2. In this picture, there are three vectors in the basis, so let's go with that. Now this basis set is independent. And all we're going to do is we're going to look at the part of V that isn't H. And we're going to pick a vector, any vector. And we are going to add that vector to this set. And we get a new independent set. Now, one of two things has happened. This might be a basis for V, in which case we're done. 
or it might not. Well, this set is linearly independent. If it's not the basis of V, it's because it doesn't span V. So now we have four vectors and we're spanning more of V than we used to, but we're still not spanning all of V. Pick a vector, any vector that we're not spanning. Add it. To the set. Either this is a basis or it isn't. If it isn't, it's because there is some part of V that we're not spanning. Pick a vector in that part, repeat this process. Well, at some point, this process must terminate. We can't keep adding the new vectors forever. Why not? Because V is finite dimensional. The dimension of V provides an upper limit to the number of independent vectors we can have. What does it mean for this process to terminate? Well, think what we're doing. We don't span V. So we add a vector. We still don't add V, so we add a vector, and so on. As long as these vectors don't span V, we can keep going. So this process terminates when these vectors span V. And once we have a linearly independent set of vectors that spans V, we have a basis of V. Now that we have this theorem in our tool bag, let's go back here and that state an addendum to this theorem. I have here a less than or equal to sign. I'll now state that if H is not equal, to V, the dimension of H is strictly less than the dimension of V. Proof. If H is not equal to V, well, H is contained in V, so we can turn a basis of H into a basis of V by adding 
vectors. So if we're taking this basis and we're adding vectors to it to get a basis of this, well, the basis we started with is a smaller than the basis we get when we add more vectors. Yes. <laughs> 